All right, moving into lesson 7.4, uh, we are now dealing with still similar triangles, but we're actually getting some of those shortcuts that I mentioned at the end of our last lesson. Um, I sort of hinted at one that looked very similar to this when you're dealing with parallel lines. So here, here's kind of what I wanted to show you. There's a lot going on up here. Let me see if I can summarize it for you um, so you can kind of see the relationship that we're talking about. So if you have parallel lines, so like let's just say you can see on this one how you see how there's like a little triangle right here sitting on top of a larger triangle. Well, if this line is parallel to this line, uh, then when you go to set up some proportions, we get uh, sort of a lot more freedom on how we want to set up our proportions. There's a lot of shortcuts that now come into play. And that's what they're trying to describe to you up here. Uh, let me see if I can simplify some of that for you. So look at example one with me. For example one, now here's that scenario where I have a smaller triangle sitting on top of this larger triangle. Right? You see how they both share angle A. Um, and so now we have their bases are parallel to each other. Right, So if that guy is parallel to that guy, uh, then we have a lot of ways, actually, that we could set up a proportion. Um, what you saw in a previous lesson, when these lines are not parallel, you definitely don't have as much freedom. There, it's very kind of a one way to do it. Um, you'd have to, and this is what I said, where we had to compare something from, say, the small triangle, like 18, to something from this big triangle, which would be 24. If I add those two lengths together, I get this total length of the big triangle, which is 24. Um, and so that's a little tougher, uh, but that's the way you have to do it when you don't have parallel lines. Um, when you have parallel lines, then the comparisons are all over the place. Um, as long as you're consistent, and this is something I've kind of been preaching at you throughout this whole chapter, was when you set up a proportion, you can set it up in many different ways. As long as however you set up the left side, you got to do the same thing on the right side of your proportion. So, for example, if I wanted to do, uh, say, 18 over 6 in my setup. So if I wanted to do the left side of this segment over the right side of this segment, 18 over 6, then when I go to set up my other ratio, again, I have to do something from the left side compared to the right side. So I would have to say x plus 22 over x plus 2, right? And that's actually how they set up theirs. It was right here. So uh, again, if I were to say left over right, that would have to equal left over right. Um, you can go across with these. So I can actually say top over bottom equals top over bottom. And so I could actually say 18 over x plus 22 equals 6 over x plus 2. Right? And so there's like all these ways now that we can set these up. Um, you can go right to left in, instead of left to right. You can go top to bottom, bottom to top, as long as you're consistent in your setup. However you do the left side, you got to do the right side the same way. Okay? And so, um, again, they chose to do uh, the left over the right equals left over right. Right, and that was their setup right here. We've done plenty of cross multiplication at this point, so I know you guys know what to do from this point. Uh, the key in this lesson is going to be making sure that we just set them up correctly, right? Because from there, it's just more cross multiplication solving for x. So let me do one of those. Let me do a couple of those with you before I mention what's going on here in example two. So if I look at this one, again, I, I here's what it looked like in the previous lesson. And I really want to show you this because I put a big red star next to this in, in the previous lesson as one of the tougher problems that you're going to run into. If these lines are not parallel, and this is something you got to check for, because if you don't look for this, uh, you, you, you run the risk of setting this up wrong. If these lines are not parallel, or if you don't know that they're parallel, you got to be careful on how you set this up. You, you can see what's, what's tricky on these diagrams is it's a little tougher to see the two different triangles because one of them, the smaller one right here, uh, 
is sitting on top of the larger one that you're seeing right here, right? So they're not separated out and they're not obvious distinct triangles. We have to understand how this little one is sitting on top of the big one. If these lines are not parallel, then you have to do things like something from the small triangle, like 5, compared to the big triangle, which would be 10. And then I have to do the same thing on the other side. I have to take something from the small triangle, like 7, and compare it to this large triangle, which is 7 plus x. Right, and so that's the way that you would have to set this up if these lines are not parallel. Guys, this works anyway. Even if the lines are parallel, this still works. Right, you can still do it that way, but what we're seeing in this lesson are some shortcuts. Right, because this is a little more complicated than what it has to be. Right, when these lines are parallel, I get a lot more freedom on which proportion I want to use. So I can do things like top over bottom equals top over bottom. So I could do 5 over 5 equals 7 over x. Right, that's, that's fair game. I can do left over right equals left over right. So I could say 5 over 7 equals 5 over x. Right, and so you got all this freedom now on how you want to set these up, but again, the key is being consistent. So if I'm going to do left over right on my first ratio, I got to do left over right on my second ratio. Right, and then as long as you're being consistent with those, you should be fine whichever way you set them up. Um, you'll still see if you were to solve this that the, the, the answers on this are still the same. But I'm really trying to drive the point home that if these lines are not parallel, you don't have all this freedom on how you want to set up your proportion. So if these lines are not parallel, then this would be the one and only way to set up, set up this problem and make sure that we did it right. Um, so again, I know you guys can cross multiply from here. Um, X is 7, no matter which way you solve it. Jump down to this one. Um, there's, again, there's multiple ways you can set these up because these lines are now parallel. Um, if they were not parallel, what would we have to do? I would have to compare the small triangle to the big triangle, right? Which would be the entire length right there. So let's just say I didn't know that these lines were parallel. Then I would have to say something like small triangle, which is X, compared to the same side on the big triangle, which is x plus x plus 12. Because remember, the issue is x plus 12 is not the entire side length of a triangle, right? The entire side length of that triangle is the whole thing, right? It's that plus that makes up the entire left side of that big triangle. That too small over big. So again, on the right side. So small triangle is 11. And the entire length of the big one is 33. And so that's the way that you would have to do it if these lines were not parallel. It still works even if they are parallel. But we have other options if they're parallel. Right, so because these lines are parallel, I don't need something quite as complicated as this. Not that that's all that bad, but there are easier ways. Um, but there is one thing that you're going to have to interpret a little bit on this. If this little piece is 11 and the whole thing is 33, what does that make this piece? Right, so the whole thing is 33. If this much of it is 11, that leaves me with 22 for this remaining segment right here. So I'm going to read into that a little bit and, and identify that length. So, but again, now there's so many ways we could set this up. So I can do top over bottom equals top over bottom. I can do left over right equals left over right. Um, as, as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do top over bottom. So I'm going to say x over x plus 12. So I did top over bottom equals top over bottom, 11 over 22. And of course, if I was going to go with this route, I would reduce this to just 
1 over 2 before I cross multiply. But again, either setup, both of these are correct. They should both get us the same value for x. I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to come back here to number 3. Um, so great one to try on your own. If you want to try this on your own, you can pause and give this one a shot. But again, you're now dealing with parallel lines. So we're, we are open to a lot more setups here. Right, so again, I can do something like that one over that one. And tell you what, let me try something with you. If I did x over x plus 10 for my first ratio, what would have to be my setup for my second ratio? So if I did x over x plus 10, what would that go with? It would have to be 10 over 30, right? So it's like I'm doing the little segment over the bigger one. That's going to go with the little segment over the bigger one on the other side. So that's one way you could set this one up, and that would be fine. Uh, what would be one other way? What if I did x over 10? So if I did x over 10, what ratio would have to go into that proportion if I started with x over 10? So if I did left over right, then I'm going to have to match that with left over right. So x plus 10 over 30. And that would also be a, a good way to set this up, and both of those would get you the same answer. So that's the main idea on this. Let me introduce you to one idea I've called a mid-segment. Um, and these are sort of bulleted up here, but let me give you the, the main ideas. A mid-segment is a segment like this that hits the midpoint on each side of this triangle. So for example, maybe I can do it with this drawing up here. So let's just look at this segment right here for TS, TYS, right? If Y is the midpoint of TS, so remember that means this is equal to this, if Y is the midpoint. Now look at this side. What if x was the midpoint of RT? So if x is the middle, then that is congruent to that. So if all that's true, if x is a midpoint and y is a midpoint, that makes this segment right here a mid-segment because it is connected to two midpoints on this triangle. Okay, so that would make x, y a mid-segment. So if you have a mid-segment, here's two very special rules that go along with it. And this is what they're telling you right here in this bullet point. Right, so if you have a mid-segment, then two things happen. It makes these two lines parallel, right? So the mid-segment is parallel to the base. The other thing that has to be true is the mid-segment is half the length of this base. So if x, y was 5, this guy would have to be 10. Right? So those are two things that happen when you have a mid-segment. So let me now go down to number 3. So take a look at this one. You can see by the marks that this is a mid-segment. Right? Because I can tell by those marks that this is a midpoint. I can tell by those marks that this is a midpoint, which makes this a mid-segment. So two things become true. It's now parallel to the base, which they already marked for us, but it is also half of the base, right? Half of the base. So here's kind of the way I always write these. I don't like to use the fractions. Um, I would rather use whole numbers. So what I tend to say is, instead of the mid-segment being half of the base, I say that if I double the mid-segment, so 2 times the mid-segment equals the base. Because it's a little bit friendlier as far as the algebra is concerned uh, when you're doing problems like this. right? So twice the mid-segment equals the base. So 2x... I guess we can put an X in there instead of M. So twice the mid-segment equals the base.
So now if you just divide the base by 2, we figure out the mid-segment is 17.5. So it would look like this. All right, let me flip over to the back side here. We're going to get a couple more rules. Um, so at first glance, when you see these, these look extremely intense. There's kind of a lot going on there, right? So let me, let me simplify it for you. Um, what you're seeing on this is these are technically obviously not triangles, right? Because they're not triangles. Um, but what you are seeing are parallel lines. And when you get parallel lines, setting up proportions becomes wide open again, right? So this, this rule that you're going to see on this page is actually extremely similar to what we just saw on the previous page. When you have parallel lines, you can set up many different proportions as long as you are consistent in the way that you set them up. So uh, because these lines are parallel, that means I can do things like top over bottom equals top over bottom. So I could say that A over B equals C over D. I can say left over right equals left over right. So I'm allowed to say that A over C is equal to B over D. Right, and there's and there's I could probably give you about four more ways that you could set these up. So there's a lot of a lot of open ways to set up a proportion for these when you have parallel lines. Again, as long as you set up the left side of your proportion the same way you set up the right side. Right, and then you're gonna be in good shape. So let me go down to some of these. And I'm actually just gonna jump right on into these practice problems because they're just so similar to what we did on the previous page. So Again, I can tell by these marks, so that one, that one, and that one, tells me that these lines are parallel, which means i got a lot of ways to set this up now. So again, I can do top over bottom equals top over bottom. Um, I can do left over right equals left over right. So it's kind of a matter of whatever you want to use. Uh, let me just go with top over bottom. So 5x over x plus 12, so top over bottom equals top over bottom, 3x over 12. And so there I now have a good proportion that I can use uh, and solve. So this one's a little tricky. I haven't dealt with these for a while. Um, let me show you what this would look like if we were to solve this. Um, th this one is definitely as tough as they get. You're not going to run into too many of these, but since it came up within uh, the exercises that they wanted us to see, let's, let's at least go through it real quick. I'm going to cross multiply like I always would do. So 5x times 12, which would be 60x, would equal x plus 12 times 3x. And I'm actually going to write that one out because I have to distribute. All right, so here's the equation that we now get to solve. Let's distribute the right side. So if I did 3x times x, what would that give you? It would be 3x squared. And if I did 3x times 12, what would that give you? Looks like 36x. So obviously we have something a little different here because we have an x squared. So I'm actually going to take you back to your Algebra 1 days uh, with this problem here. And it was solving what we called quadratic equations. So when you solve quadratics, quadratics just means you have x squared within the equation, right? So when you solve quadratics, um, the main way that we solve them is by factoring. And I know you guys did a ton of factoring in Algebra, um, algebra 1 last year. So let me remind you of just one of those methods of factoring that we're going to use on this problem. When you solve a quadratic, typically the first thing you want to do is get everything onto one side of the equation so that it would equal zero. Right? That's kind of the key in solving quadratics is you always want to make them equal zero. So I'm going to subtract 60x over to the right. So I got my 3x squared. And if I subtract 60x from this guy, I'm going to be down to negative 24x. 
All right. So the way that you solve these uh, in the past was by factoring out the greatest common factor. So if I look at these two terms, the greatest common factor between those two terms, we know would be 3x. 3x is the biggest thing that they have in common, right? I can go into both of them. So I'm going to factor out 3x. And when we say factor, what we're really meaning is division. I am dividing out 3x from each term, right? Factoring is the opposite of distribution, right? So instead of multiplying, distributing, you are factoring, which is division, right? It's like we're undoing this kind of stuff. So I'm dividing each one by 3x. So if I divided this by 3x, all I would have left is x. And if I divided this one by 3x, all I would have is 8. All right. Um, so on this one, here's how you always finish these off. First of all, let me just mention, here's how you know you did this right. If I distributed, would it give me back what I started with right here? And you can see that it would. So I know I did that correctly. So the final step on this was, you know, when you solve something by factoring, the reason we wanted this to equal zero is because I can now take each factor and set them equal to zero. So I'm going to set 3x equal to zero. And I'm going to set x minus 8 equal to zero. And now I can find my solutions from these equations. If I solve this for x, what would we get? Well, if you divide both sides by 3, you're just going to get x is zero. Right, so there's one of my solutions for x. On this one, if I add the 8 over to the other side, I get x equals 8. So these are my two solutions. They look like this. Here's one thing you have to consider in geometry, though. Only one of those makes sense. Right, only one of those answers makes sense. If I took 0 and plugged it back in for x, I'm just going to pick on this one. Would that make sense? Can I have a length? of zero wouldn't make sense right so because we're talking about geometric shapes we got to realize certain values that really would not make sense logically they don't fit if you plug it back in so however eight would right if eight if i plug it back in would fit and that would be good lengths for those guys so um, he's the only answer i would keep all right you're not going to run into too many of those i just wanted to at least show you that because well, you did learn it in Algebra 1, and you're going to get an entire chapter on this next year in Algebra 2. So really important that you uh, at least get a little exposure to some quadratics. Let me go over to here. Um, so for these ones, you'll notice that all three of these are equal. So, so this is taking us back to our one of our mid-segment ideas. Because this is a midpoint, and because these lines are parallel, um, what we're seeing is if the left sides are equal, then the right sides would also have to be equal, right? So if this over this, if I wanted to compare those two to each other, they're obviously equal to each other, right? Well, if, if this equals this, then in my proportion, this equals this, right? And so I can say stuff like, 12 is equal to 2x minus 6, right? And then you get a very easy equation that you could solve from there. So add the 6 and divide by 2. All right, let me jump down to these final two examples. I'm going to solve for x and y on these guys. I'm going to save him for the, for the end because he's the tougher one. Let me go to this one. So on this one, again, this, this would be a great practice one. So if you want to pause the video and give this one a try, this would be a good one for you guys to try on your own. The key on this, again, is having these parallel lines. So I can tell by the, the little triangles here, here, and here that these lines are parallel. So, again, gives you a ton of freedom on how you want to set this up. A lot of good ways you can do it. I can do left over right equals left over right and I know that works
Um, I could do top over bottom equals top over bottom, and that would work too. Um, so anyway, if we cross multiply, I'm going to do 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 4 times x. A little distribution on this side. Subtract the 3x, and we find that 12 is x. All right. Let me go to this guy. So on this one, we are solving for x and y. So at first glance, this one looks kind of tough, because like, how would I set up a proportion? If I tried to say uh, maybe left over right equals left over right, um, that gives me an equation that I can't solve because I have two different letters in it, right? And so what we have to recognize on this is, look at the marks. See those congruent marks? That tells me that 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 1. And so there's my setup. Now I can solve that for x nice and easy. Uh, subtract 2x from both sides. And then add 1 to both sides. And we have our value for x. Okay. So, and again, this really goes back to the mid-segment idea. Um, but if these two guys are equal, and you have these parallel lines, well, if the left sides are equal then the right sides must be equal as well. So again, the rule is because these are parallel, if those sides are congruent, then these sides must also be congruent. So I know that 3y is equal to 2y plus 2. And now I can just subtract 2y from both sides to get my answer for y. So that's kind of the one rule where we're really not really setting up proportions. We're just identifying congruent parts, right? Things that would have to be equal to each other under these circumstances. Um, and that was really the rule that they were trying to tell you within this diagram right here. So when they're saying they have the ratio of one, right? That just means that they're equal to each other. So I just think some of their notations can be a little confusing to look at sometimes. So, uh, but. Anyway, that was the idea. So that's it for this lesson.